Okay, today I would like to talk about pacification and its effect on the black community. First, let me explain what pacification is. Pacification is an attempt to create or maintain peace. That means appeasing hostile countries um, through diplomacy or even just by settling an argument. Now, in the past, pacification have been used in let's just say you know the take the Europeans and the colonization of the United States um, they gave Native Americans certain things um, I know it seemed like these that this was a result of treaties but basically um, they were given certain things concessions to just make them comfortable and peaceful while you know the Europeans kinda did their thing it was also used um, obviously unsuccessfully in Vietnam where they increased the quality of life for the local Vietnam um, peoples during the war and recently it has been used um, in the African-American community and so if you're wondering where all of these entitlements in this that began in the 60s the title nines the you know affirmative actions the and all of these programs that were meant to help black people this was a result of an attempt to pacify what at the time was considered to be a hostile populace now I don't know if they actually considered African Americans a threat to America itself but given the time and the circumstances with the cold war and everything going on and you want to put capitalism in a positive light then i can see a number of reasons why it would be in america's best interest to have a less hostile black populace so they attempted to make peace through civil rights and certain other things basically everything we were marching for and you know uh, martin luther king you all know the history and it didn't work and what I want to focus on today is why it didn't work and how this is going to affect us going on and what we should do as black men to prepare ourselves so why it didn't work okay quick segue so when the British colonized India they noticed that there were a lot of snakes um, within the city and you know um, the British being British say okay well we want to establish some type of order and we would prefer to live in a society without a bunch of snakes everywhere so what did they do well they paid the local population I don't know maybe like a pound or something for a snakehead a dead snakehead this was uh, their attempt of course was to get the Indians themselves um, to kill off all the snakes and it seemed like a valid attempt except for one thing the local population the native population realize that once all of the snakes are gone we'll no longer get money for snake heads so what they began to do was create snake farms and more and more snakes were created and the British started to realize that look this problem is never going to go away we actually made it worse because now they're farming snakes and selling it back to us so back to the african-american community after the you know whatever you want to call it the government or the power structure of the time attempted to pacify the african-american community with you know welfare trinkets with you know, all the all the government goodies everything that you know we have disproportionately taken advantage of particularly the african-american women have disproportionately taken advantage of for the past 60 some odd years so after that was done the whole purpose was hey let's you know enjoy the peace because we've given everything that we can but just like the local Indian population and the snakes the problems got worse African Americans became you know relatively speaking more hostile even though they were you know hostile toward each other the image of the violent 
black men continued the revolutionary you know things like that that just continued all the way to the 80s and then the late 90s and then things started to calm down a bit but what also happened is there's less um, need for pacification at this point no one really you know i mean black men weren't really looking to overthrow the system i mean all that talk about the revolution this the revolution that you know the revolution will not be to that all pretty much ended and you know we are were for the most part on some you know go along to get along type thing as long as we had equal opportunity we would um, do our best to make our way in this country so they started to roll back the previous programs you know the pacification programs affirmative action was gotten rid of you know and and welfare was cut and it's starting to get worse and worse more and more cuts are coming now how does that affect us today and current year well, there's some female YouTubers online who are calling for this new revolution. This, you know, black men are, you know, basically they're trying to shame you into a new revolution talk because you have to take down the, you know, um, what, what's it called? Albinoid, Caucasoid, or whatever the fuck they want to call it. So they want to kind of promote this, this, you know, racial um, hostility between black and non-black in particular and that's the reason for that is simple the last time that they did this in history they got a bunch of goodies now that those goodies are leaving and some of them are completely gone they want them back and they feel that the only way to do this is to create hostility and then wait for them to you know send in the pacification routines like okay here, black woman, here's some more welfare, here's some more wig vouchers, here's some more blah, 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 blah. Will you keep, will you please keep your men in line? And of course they will say no, they will have them continue to, to, you know, kind of spear rattle the system and demand more and more pacification. This will benefit the women who receive the benefits temporarily it will not benefit the men on any side. It would just cause more hostility between, you know, um, black men in an overwhelming system while the black woman receives all the benefits. So next time you hear a woman call you a coward for not overthrowing white supremacy, which is, you know, retarded, then you should really know her motivation by it. She don't really want you to overthrow white supremacy. She wants you to appear hostile to white supremacy so they can give her more shit. However, when you look at the results of other communities who at least appear to go along to get along, they are thriving relative to not only us, but to white Americans. You know, you never hear the Asians talk about revolution and this, this, and this. Um, from time to time, you hear um, Latin Americans do it, but, you know, not nearly to the extent we did. You know, there weren't really songs and music and, and stuff like that. So, yeah, um, it seems like when you fight the power and lose, you kind of wind up with an overweight woman on welfare you know, calling you all kind of names and disrespecting you, you don't really get very far. And if you win, what do you get? Do you get the same woman not calling you a coward? Or I don't mean... So guys, just think about what you're doing. Do not let somebody shame you into battle. Pick your own battles in life. Do not let other people pick them for you. Pick the ones that are important enough to fight and easy enough to win. And if you really feel a need to to fight other battles, then you wait and prepare silently and covertly. You do not you do not attack an enemy that's entrenched on a on a hill. That's the art of war. Pon takes queen. Peace.